Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that I love despite its many flaws. It has such an interesting setting and a high level execution of RPG storytelling, presentation, and delivery when it's working as intended. However, when Cyberpunk first released, as many people know, <laughs> the open world was very far from perfect, the combat and progression felt a bit half-baked, and uh, there, there, there were, uh, you, you could say there were a couple bugs that really dragged out in those great moments a ton. Thankfully, the developers didn't drop the game after release, and they've added numerous updates since the initial release alongside a huge overall to the base game alongside a paid $30 expansion called Phantom Liberty. Before we talk about Phantom Liberty, let me very briefly talk about the huge overall to the base game or the 2.0 update. It really did add lots of improvements. The combat feels better thanks to a bunch of new weapons and gear being added to the base game alongside a new more developed skill tree that really does feel more impactful. There's now vehicle combat outside of scripted sequences and new vehicles to collect. The world feels a bit more cohesive than it did previously. However, there's still an awkward clunkiness around the game. There's still lots of visual and audio bugs that really do alleviate tension when you're supposed to feel it during important moments. Uh, it's, uh, it's not too far from what you'd experience out of a Bethesda game if you've played one of those. Anyways, the real reason I wanted to make this video is not about the 2.0 overall to the base game Cyberpunk 2077, but the expansion Phantom Liberty that's been added to this base game, which uh, has quickly become one of my favorite DLCs I've ever experienced in, in, in gaming as a whole, I, I think. I'm trying to think of a better one off the top of my head. No definite statements, but I, 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 I'm having a hard time. It doesn't reinvent the wheel and doesn't overhaul the entirety of Cyberpunk and make it into something that it's not. So if you don't like Cyberpunk, I wouldn't look towards Phantom Liberty to be salvation or to uh, reinvent what you don't like. However, if you do like Cyberpunk and you feel an experience that expands upon the story, the combat, and the world in every way that you'd expect, and then some, then uh, I, I, I really, 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 really highly recommend Phantom Liberty. Starting with storytelling and how that story was presented in Phantom Liberty, it really did set a higher bar or raise the bar from what was to be expected from the base game. There are super well choreographed sequences or scenes that range from noticing the character's guilt on their eyebrow to super well scripted action sequences that fill you with adrenaline. I also hope that there are far fewer visual bugs during the expansion experience, if any at all, throughout my playthrough, and it really, really helped you hone in on the experience as, you know, the game was working as intended. It really does seem like the level of quality control was different in this expansion, which very much helped in the delivery of emotional lines from very emotionally driven characters that really do encourage you as a player to feel something. On the topic of characters, I'd say that a couple of the characters are some of the most well written and active characters I've experienced in an RPG outside of the scope of just the DLC. And these characters are accompanied by a very interesting overarching plot that I don't want to get into the fine details of because I want you to experience that for yourself. But it is like a spy thing with Idris Elba and in a cyberpunk setting with themes of guilt. Your choices also matter as much as your choices in the base game of cyberpunk did. So maybe not, it's, it's not like a Baldur's Gate 3, but you're able to have different outcomes for what happens during this expansion. And you're even able to have an entirely different ending to the entire base game of cyberpunk if you make certain decisions throughout the story experience of Phantom Liberty. And again, looking outside of the lens of just a DLC or an expansion, the story in Phantom Liberty really does hold its own as an isolated story experience compared to many games out there. I'd say it's a very great story, even removed and isolated from Cyberpunk. And what's very, very great about the expansion is it does weave itself very, very well into the already existing world of Cyberpunk to make it feel like it's always been there. It further elaborates on characters that you've already met in very satisfying ways. And the way that they weave action moments through interesting choreographed action sequences alongside interesting gameplay moments, thanks to the additions to the skill tree, made me look forward to more than just the story threads. The combat in Phantom Liberty isn't completely removed or changed from the base game. It's more of a couple of additions that are incredibly impactful in themselves. You have a new selection of skills to choose from thanks to a new branch in your skill tree that you're able to progress through experiencing the, the main story of this expansion or exploring the new zone that they've added. You're really able to grab some insane abilities that do change the way that you approach gameplay. I primarily went with a Mantis Blade or Melee build throughout this playthrough of Cyberpunk because Mantis Blades look really fucking cool. And thanks to the overhaul to the base game and the added abilities in the Phantom Liberty expansion, I was really able to control the melee build I've always wanted out of the many first-person RPGs that I have played. I do, however, think it's very far from the greatest first-person shooter out there, and I would not play this game for the combat alone by any stretch of the imagination. But 
the combat was something to look forward to and it was a nice breath of fresh air after seeing through a long dialogue sequence with characters being able to experience all of these new additions or improvements to the uh, to the combat or core gameplay loop well i guess the core kind game core gameplay loop is like talking to people and experiencing story stuff but <laughs> um being able to experience all of this in a new zone that really nails down what a cyberpunk dystopian future should be made me really happy most of phantom liberty takes place in a new zone called dogtown which encapsulates <laughs> um it, it's like if they took night city which is the base city that the game takes place in and, and turned it up to 10. it's an absolute hellhole void of morals but there's also so much beauty in the imperfection and chaos that's sown throughout the city or subsection of town dogtown the town aesthetically i fucking love everything in this new town section it feels like it's always been in the game you've just never had a, a great enough reason to visit this hellhole because of how void of morals it is and then from the approach of, of level design or world design gameplay wise it's it's not much more elaborate than the base game's open world already is. There are new gigs or what in the base game would be looked at as fetch quests throughout this new section that are a little bit more elaborate than they previously were with interesting enough stories to keep you attentive and and to, to grab your attention. There are also new side quests throughout this new section that are fun to go through and elaborate Dogtown a bit more than it already was. And all of the usual accoutrement with different things to collect with different weapons, different clothes, or different collectibles throughout Dogtown. It's not a reinvention gameplay-wise whatsoever, uh, but visually, it very much feels different than the base game and at home as if it's always been there in the first place. It's, uh, I, I think it's, it, it's beautiful. And for those who don't know really quickly, Cyberpunk's open world isn't like super elaborate and it's not incredibly discovery driven compared to some other games out there it's primarily narrative driven in terms of like going out to different quests there there are different like things to explore and and things to grab but it's not going to captivate you nearly as much as some other games out there as i previously said i love cyberpunk so this experience was a very very nice treat however as i also said if you don't like cyberpunk don't play phantom liberty it's not going to reinvent something that you don't already like but hey if you like rpgs that are narrative driven and you haven't played cyberpunk <laughs> go play cyberpunk and 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 if you do end up liking cyberpunk you have a really fucking solid expansion to go spend some some time in thank you